In 1908, a chemical factory opened in the coastal village of Minamata, Japan. The factory, ran by Chiso Corporation, began to rapidly expand and create new products for the next half century. But little did the residents of Minamata know, the actions and negligence of this factory would lead to the largest mercury pollution disaster in history, changing the fate of the world forever. It wasn't until the 1950s that residents began to notice several afflictions. It began with numbness, muscle weakness, and loss of coordination, but quickly progressed to intense neurological disorders and regular birth defects. As cases began to pop up more and more frequently, an early epidemiological study announced that an epidemic of an unknown disease of the central nervous system was spreading around the village. No one knew the cause of what was happening, but clearly there was one and the city invited researchers from Kumamoto University to help investigate. The researchers' first discovery was strange. There had been several instances of local cats displaying erratic behaviors and having neurological issues. The locals had been referring to it as the dancing cat disease. They then found that crows had been falling out of the sky, fish floated dead in the bay, and seaweed no longer grew on the seabed. Whatever this disease was, it was affecting the biology of all the local organisms, and showing signs of environmental damaging. As research continued, it was noted that victims of the Minamata disease often ate higher quantities of fish and shellfish from the bay. They eventually identified that it was mercury causing the disease, a heavy metal that was transferring from seafood to the people that ate it. When they analyzed local waters, they found large quantities of mercury in the fish, seaweed, and everywhere else. Where the concentration was highest? Right around the wastewater canal of the Chiso factory. In an attempt to deflect the ensuing scrutiny, Chiso Corp redirected its waste to the Shiranoi Sea, where the disease began to spread to other fishing villages along the coast. The Chiso factory refused to cooperate with the Kumamoto research team, withholding information about their industrial processes and funding research of their own into alternative causes of the Minamata disease. But as this began to affect the previously fruitful fishing business of the village, the Minamata Fishing Cooperative protested and demanded accreditation from Chiso Corp. After an intense back and forth, the factory agreed stating that they would swallow their tears and accept, paying the fishers 20 million yen. News of this caused other affected villages to begin seeking compensation as well, with several fishing alliances heading to the factory to demand it. Chiso was eventually forced to give several collectives accreditation of their own, and was ordered by the Ministry of International Trade and Industry to install new wastewater treatments at the factory. They installed a cyclator purification system, but in the following years, the installed treatment showed no signs of lowering the level of mercury being released, and the disease continued to spread. Meanwhile, in the village, Minamata patients became victims of discrimination and ostracization. The disease was at first suspected to be contagious, causing patients to be isolated and have their homes disinfected. Yet even when contagion was disproven, a strong stigma began to surround the victims of the disease. This led to the formation of the Minamata Disease Patients Families Mutual Aid Society, who began a sit-in at the factory, eventually earning accreditation of their own. A hundred 100,000 yen per year for adults, 30,000 yen per child, and a one-time payment of 320,000 yen for families of dead patients. Unfortunately, receiving this compensation caused even more of a rift between the patients and the rest of the Minamata villagers, and many even avoided seeking accreditation to hide their symptoms. As the decades went on, people slowly began to be more receptive to the struggles of Minamata victims. Eventually, the Citizens' Council for Minamata Disease Countermeasures was established, a support group for those with the disease to deal with the social stigma around them. The Minamata disease continued to impact the various groups involved in the whole ordeal, from the patients and their families who were faced with both debilitation and discrimination for years before they were given any care or sympathy, to the fishermen who had their way of living damaged and continued to seek and protest accreditation, unable to safely fish again until 1977, to the local and national governments that could have responded to the situation sooner and began to rework their policies to better equip themselves on identifying and intervening on potential pollution hazards, to Chiso Corporation itself, that held back on responsibility until the cause was too clear to be avoided. They would have to pay much more in accreditation and defamation in the following years, especially when it was revealed that they knew their cyclator purification system would be completely ineffective all along, leading to a criminal case against the company in 1975. But even with all these different perspectives that had their own motivations, 
motivations and philosophies about the situation, I think they could at least agree on one thing. With thousands infected and hundreds dead, the Minamata mercury pollution was a clear human disaster that did not need to reach the level of severity that it did. Which brings us to today. With years to reflect and critically analyze the situation, it's clear that it left quite the historical significance. For one, Minamata now has a disease named after it. But the whole ordeal also caused Japan to set safe regulatory standards for mercury and methyl mercury levels in fish and shellfish, and instituted cleanup efforts in the Minamata Bay. The events during the height of the Minamata disaster informed how Japan would act during the next pollution disaster a few years later, and two more of them later on. As the first of these four big pollution diseases of Japan, the Minamata disaster caused a shift in views, garnering support for the prevention of pollution and sympathy to the victims of it. It raised awareness internationally as well, with the United Nations providing guidance on mercury pollution and its impacts to other countries, who would use the incident to inform their own decisions and regulations regarding potential pollutants. It took the village decades to get over the disaster, but some may say that they never truly have. The consequences not only affect affected those who were directly in contact with the poisoned food, but also the children who were born with defects and disabilities. So the Minamata disease still impacts people living today. The latest count showed 2,282 people recognized as having the disease, and thousands more are likely living with it unrecognized. And to this day, whether or not Chiso Corp or the government gave enough support for these victims is a sore subject. As a world, we learn valuable lessons from disasters like these, and they should be implemented to prevent situations like this happening in the future, or at least to better respond to them. Here are three that we can draw from the Minamata mercury poisoning. First is to pay attention. Safety should always be at the forefront of thought, especially when dealing with chemical productions. The Minamata disease could have possibly been prevented if people acted upon the noticeable signs that something was wrong earlier. I mean, people knew that the local wildlife had been acting strangely, with the dancing cats and all. But also when the early epidemiological study was conducted and the disease was discovered, it took a while for people to pay it any mind, since the etiological agent of the disease was yet to be identified. If people were more vigilant to these warning signs, they could have began countermeasures much earlier, and the damages to humans, animals, and the ecosystem would have been much smaller. The second lesson is that negligence can lead to disaster. When Chiso Corp first opened their factory over a century ago, they knew about their wastewater products but didn't say anything about it. The downstream effects of this clearly weren't taken into account, and when dumping mercury turned into the Minamata disease, it was already too late. Economic growth was prioritized by the company and its supporters so much that they denied responsibility at first. This level of negligence to health risks cannot be something that companies in engage in if we want to prevent things like this from happening in the future. Additionally, there was some neglect from the government as well. When the Kumamoto researchers began their investigation, they proposed that the Food Sanitation Act be invoked to regulate the consumption of contaminated fish, but the Ministry of Health and Welfare of Japan waived it, saying that there was no clear evidence that all fish were poisoned in the bay. Lastly, we learn from this disaster the importance of communication. All relevant parties that could have been affected by the factory's waste disposal should have been notified. The fishermen, villagers, and government should have had a dialogue with Chiso Corp from the start. If people had known that the company was dumping their waste products into the bay, it's possible that the issue would have been looked into and caught onto much sooner. Instead, residents didn't know that they were getting poisoned for decades. The government also didn't heed the words of the early epidemiological study and suggestions of the researchers. If they had instead communicated with them further, asking them why they thought this to be such a danger, maybe they would have understood the situation better to help with it sooner. It took protests and sit-ins and even a forceful entering of the factory at one point for some of the parties to communicate, which really should not have been the case. Clearly, communication is essential to prevent disaster. All in all, the Minamata Mercury incident was a horrifying event that we should do more than hope won't happen again. Everyone can learn important principles and practices to draw from the pollution disaster, to ensure safety, proper procedure, and conscientiousness. So I hope that you gained something from watching this. Thank you for your time.